If you told me 12 years ago that you were a fan of the Guardians, I would have said, That's great! Thank you! What is that? Ha! You thought I was going to use this clip again, didn't you? Back then, no one knew who they were. Not even the people playing them. What is the meaning of this? I am called Gamera. Nowadays, the Guardians of the Galaxy are a household name, with a successful trilogy, video games, and merchandise. So it wasn't surprising that Marvel greenlit an animated series. And I was excited. I mean, a Guardians TV show? What a great idea! Yet, now, no one talks about it. So, was this a disappointment or misunderstood success? Well, let's cue our Walkmans and find out. We find the Guardians breaking into an alien prison to rescue Yondu and... Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Obviously, the show is based on the film. In fact, it's supposed to take place after the movie, which clearly establishes itself as a separate universe. We'll get back to this. As I said before, the Guardians are the universal exception to adapting the films, because no one cared about them before. Now, I'm not saying people can't or don't want to see the classic versions on TV. But let's be honest, this will always be everyone's ideal version of the Guardians. That doesn't mean you can't do something different and a show like this can do something new and not just copy the movie. So, let's see what they do. So, what are we? Heroes or outlaws? Why can't we be both? Uh, Seriously, Rocket? I, I don't hear you losers coming up with a plan. That was not a plan. That wasn't even 12% of a plan. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that. In the Avengers video, I pointed out how annoying the pandering was to the MCU and how it got in the way of the show. However, it's worse here because at least they had multiple movies to pander. This show only had one. I have to challenge you to another dance off. Roman Day? Oh man, you know, I haven't seen you since I saved your family and your entire planet. All the characters act exactly like they did in the first film. Although that isn't exactly good. While the main characters have developed arcs, supporting characters like Yondu and Nebula are stuck in their first movie arcs. We don't see them grow until the very last minute. Remember all that rich character development we got in the MCU? Well, forget all that. I also have a problem with how this show handles Star-Lord. Peter Quill is voiced by Will Friedel, who you may remember as Ron Stoppable. He's a great voice actor, but wasn't the right choice for Star-Lord. I'm not trying to compare him to Chris Pratt, but Peter Quill shouldn't sound like this. Okay, one, Rat paid for the ship, not you. Two, we don't need another ship. And three, like unbeatable is not the same as unbeatable. What the Krutak is that? I don't know, his heart? Plants don't have hearts, except hearts of palm. And celery hearts. You finished? I think so. No wait, artichoke hearts! Haha! <laughs> now I am finished. He sounds like Deadpool, which makes sense because he was. And if I were to compare him, then Scott Porter and John McLaren do a better job. But the worst part about this is how the show treats him. Everyone constantly picks on him and hardly says anything nice about him. Yes! Score another one for the amazing Star Lord! Now! What he wants. The box is useless anyway. So's Quill, but I'm not about to hand him over. Hey, what is it, boy? Huh? What is it? Timmy in the well? Uh, you know, on Earth, that's totally hilarious. I can see why you don't go back. And this will happen throughout the entire show. I will say, I like how they incorporated his elemental gun, and of course, his love of music. So with all that out of the way, let's see what the story is. The Guardians find an artifact called the Spartaxian Crypto Cube, which Korath wants and... Wait a minute, isn't he dead? Finger to the throat means death. 
Anyways, the Cosmic Cube, I mean the Crypto Cube, is a powerful weapon that is capable of anything. However, this weapon needs Cosmic Seeds to power it, so the Guardians have to find it before Thanos does. That's the main focus of the season. It's pretty standard and something we've already seen before. The Crypto Cube is barely different from the Cosmic Cube. I bet they wanted to use that, but realized the Avengers already did. They try to make it a personal item for Peter and tie it into his comic book origins. But at the end of the day, it's just one of those space artifacts you'll forget about. What happens in between is more interesting. So let's see what's the good, the bad, and the okay ones. The Collector and Grandmaster episodes are fun, although kind of hilarious when they change the Collector's design to match the movie, but kept the Grandmaster's comic design. It's even funnier when we do find out what the MCU's version would look like. The Groot episode was fun and a great callback to his original comic. It was especially fun to see the Black Order and Titus. We get a pretty cool symbiote episode that explores the alien side of the species, and two more Rocket episodes with him going back to Half-World and wearing the Destroyer armor. A lot of the character episodes are fun, but I wish I could say the same for Gamora's. They're alright, but annoying since it's one of those, I can't tell you what I'm doing or else it won't work. And even more annoying because this happens twice. The humans are featured twice, because we have to sell them. And we get a space cattle drive episode. I don't know why we needed this. Oh, and the holiday ones are alright, I guess. There's really only one bad episode, but I saved it for last because of how stupid it is. So the Guardians are on a planet that makes people go back to the young mental states, because the planet itself is a child. No, it's not Ego, and yes, that would've made more sense. Nebula uses the planet to bring back Ronan the Accuser. Ronan the Accuser lives once more! I know a lot of people didn't necessarily like Ronan from the movie, but he served a purpose and worked there. Bringing him back was just a horrible decision because one, we already have two villains, one of them being Thanos. Two, it's an obvious attempt to recapture that first movie, it just comes off as lazy. And three, no one cares. Alright, let's get back to the story. The Guardians go to Spartax where we learn Peter's father is king, thus making him a prince. He even has a sister which I think is the original creation of the show. It's cool to see the comic origin of Star-Lord adapted accurately. And they don't hold back on showing how much of a piece of shit his father is. After beating Jason, Peter realizes the Cosmic Seed is on Earth and returns for the first time since his mother's death. This is pretty cool since we never really got this moment in the movies and I always wanted to see this. They find it only for Thanos to steal it and now it's an epic final battle. The only weird part about it is where are the Avengers? Season 1 is enjoyable, however there are so many references and lines from the movie that felt so forced. I liked it when they separated themselves and hopefully they can continue that in the next season. So we pick up right where the game left off and there's no shading. Yeah, this is when the animated shows stopped adding the second layer on characters. Again, it was probably budget related, but it's so weird looking at this when we just saw how it was before. Also, I don't know why, but most of the characters look like they're constantly in the shadow, even when they're standing in daytime. So in a way, they are shaded. <laughs> the Guardians find out that Thanos' asteroid base is being held by the Avengers. That's right, the Guardians of the Galaxy meet the Avengers for the first time. And here's where everything starts to get confusing. Now I'm going to try to explain this in the best way possible. We know it's based on the movie, but it's not in the MCU, because obviously. And it's definitely a different universe since the Guardians meet Dor and the Avengers for the first time here. Now you could say this explains why they know them in Assemble, but everyone looked differently and the Avengers didn't have a compound at this point. So it's a different canon, yet my issue is that they're supposed to be the same Avengers we've seen in Assemble. Why would you write two different versions of these characters, yet use the same design in this supposedly connected universe? And if these Avengers know Thanos, then how is he alive? In Assemble, he was atomized. <laughs> I will tear each Avenger apart! I 
This just makes everything super confusing, especially for kids. Anyway, everyone fights each other, almost kills innocent people, and fights the High Evolutionary. Rocket steals a strange sarcophagus that was found on Thanos' asteroid base, and tries to sell it. It's stolen by Yondu, and the Guardians work to find it while competing against Mantis and the Universal Believers which I'm guessing are supposed to be the Universal Church of Truth. So the villains are Mantis, which sucks, and these annoying a-holes. I believe I came to the same conclusion. I believe we will open the cocoon! And I believe the Golden Age will begin! I believe! I believe! <laughs> So let's rate the episodes. Gamora finds a Nova helmet and kinda goes crazy with it. She and Nebula are trapped in a sarcophagus along with the High Evolutionary. This leads to fun cosmic shenanigans with the quantum bands, constantly switching everyone around. There's a babysitting episode with this little brat, but Drax gets to be a fodder so that's a pass. This is later followed up by them trying to have a peace conference and rescuing Cosmo from the Believers, who steal Cosmo's powers and also cause a zombie outbreak on nowhere. No, not like Dead Space. Although that would have been fun. Oh, there's also an episode where Peter and Jason work together to fight Korvac. It's alright, but I don't know why it's the last episode of the season, and why it's even there considering everything that happens. The only bad one is the Guardians stuck on Earth and doing boring chores. Alright, back to the story. The sarcophagus hatches, and assuming you've all seen Guardians 3, then you know it's Adam Warlock. I must say it's pretty cool since this came out before the second movie and the game so no one really knew the character. Thanks to Adam, Groot now has the ability to restore his species. Unfortunately, Planet X was weaponized by Thanos with symbiotes and it's an all out symbiote invasion. See, that's how you do a zombie episode. It's a fun 3 part event that includes Spartax and Asgard. Now you're probably wondering what happened to the Nova helmet Gamora was wearing. Turns out it's an ancient helmet that eventually ends up in the hands of Sam Alexander. Yup, they're introducing Nova, and thankfully the right way. If you remember, Nova was an Ultimate Spider-Man, although he was a huge pain in the ass and nothing like his comic counterpart. Here, they finally do it right, even recreating exact scenes from the comic too. But as much as I like this, it brings up questions. Now there's a different version of Nova, when we already know what the other Nova is supposed to look like. Once again, establishing itself as a different universe. So, not looking into this any further. Unfortunately, while I like this version, Sam is still a dumbass and releases Jason, who of course has been behind everything. He plans to use a Nova Centurion helmets to gain control of Adam Warlock. This leads to an epic battle with Jason wearing a Nova helmet between the Guardians and Sam. And I'll give the animators credit where it's due. They made the fights look cool, despite the low budget looking backgrounds. This ends with Adam Warlock absorbing Jason into his crystal, turning into Magus. After another epic battle, the Guardians manage to break Jason out of Magus, restoring Adam back. Jason is beaten, Adam Warlock is entombed, and Groot is now a baby because the second movie came out. And that was season 2! It was more ambitious with the story, but I hated the Universal Believers. Every time they talked was so annoying. They weren't as compelling as the ones in the video game, and seeing Mantis go out like that was nothing but insulting. Well, at this rate, Season 3 might turn out better. So this season is called Mission Breakout. Yup, they named an entire season on the Disneyland ride. Oh, we're in trouble. The first episode is an advertisement, and not even a good one. I've been on the ride, and it's a thousand times more interesting than this. So let's just skip this episode. The Guardians receive a distress call from Ant-Man, who is now voiced by Josh Keen. God, don't you love inconsistent voice actor casting? Also, please voice Spider-Man! Anyway, Thanos' asteroid base had a secret symbiote, which I don't know why it chose to reveal itself now, 
instead of a season ago, which leads to the Guardians meeting Spider-Man. Is it just me or are these subway rats getting huge? Wait a minute. Why does he sound and look like Robbie Damon Spider-Man? Because that's Marvel Spider-Man, not Ultimate Spider-Man. Which also doesn't make sense because these are different Avengers than what they looked like later. And they technically meet Spider-Man before, so... Alright, you know what? F*** this bullshit. I'm done. This is not a different universe. This is lazy continuity. You can't just reuse character designs and set pieces without dragging those stories they established before. Because then it makes no sense and questions everything. Spider-Man already met the Guardians with his Nova, but now it's backwards. Why? Because fuck you for caring. And you want to know the most insulting part about this? Just look. Since Marvel Spider-Man is in a different art style, they reuse the Ultimate Spider-Man model. So in most shots, it looks like Ultimate, but then there's other shots where he does look like the 17 model. I mean, what was happening when they made this? Jesus Christ, dude, we are gonna lose our jobs. Well, calm down, because here's one thing that's not gonna happen. What? We're not gonna get fired. We're not, because we've already been fired. Anyway, Spider-Man schools the Guardians, as he should, until he realizes that symbiotes are involved and teams up with them. Unfortunately, they're too late because the red symbiote bonds with Danos. That's right, it's Danos plus Carnage. And as awesome as that sounds, it's not used to its full potential. It's no red goblin, but at least it looks better than this crap. Red Danos needs a symbiote kept at Horizon High, so Peter goes in and oh god, that's just weird to look at. I don't know if that's better or worse than the 2017 show. It's even weirder when we see Max and he looks the same. Eventually, Thanos breaks in, which, if we're counting... Rocket throws Peter into the lab symbiote, kinda cool, but then again it's Rocket, and we get Black Suit Spidey, and of course, it's the ultimate model. They didn't even bother to redesign it. We finally see Spider-Man fight Thanos, which I just realized we've never seen this in any of the shows before. Overall, it's a fun Spidey episode, I guess, but probably the worst animated Marvel episode I've ever seen. The Guardians have Thanos captured, but due to Sam's stupidity, he escapes again. Man, is Sam always this dumb? Thanos lands on Titan, which has this weird green filter for some reason, and after another battle, they recapture Thanos, so kinda pointless. Groot grows up, and the Guardians are rich now, which leads to them disbanding like all famous artists. Rocket flaunts his money, Groot gets robbed, Drax soul searches, and Gamora tries to be Mr. Beast, and Star-Lord opens a talk show. These episodes are not really interesting and drag for way too long. After blowing all the money, the Guardians go on a job from Howard the Duck, who set them up for stealing a Kree item. All thanks to the Collector, god damn for still using them. This also leads to them being chased by Violet Vell, the new Kree accuser. Collector shrinks Hala, which forces Violet Vell to work with the Guardians. Okay, this is getting overwhelming, can we slow down and- So this is the Black Vortex, which is an awesome combo event involving the X-Men. It's a cosmic device that could grant the user cosmic powers and shows one full potential. It's a great story that makes you question self-value, what kind of person you can be, and of course, awesome space action. This could have been the entire season, yet instead, it's a magic little gateway featuring different types of animations. Wait, what? The one thing you took out of that entire story and you f***ed it all up. Most of these specials aren't good. Gamora is a Disney princess. Drax is in a comic book. At least he has his old costume. Rocket is what the f*** is that? Groot talks and Peter is clay animated, I think? Oh, and Rocket is in an old cartoon. 
Hey, there's Ronin! Bet you forgot he was alive since he flew away back in Season 1. Anyways, the Guardians escape and Groot is a baby again. But now, the galaxy has been taken over by the Darkhawks. Which, if you know who that is, then... NERD! The Darkhawks were made by Odin's brother, Serpent, who has infected the World Tree and the galaxy is endangered again. Which is like the third time this season. The Guardians tried using a small group of friends to help, which didn't do much. So with no other choice, they asked for Thanos' help. I mean, f*** it at this point, why not? Maybe that will liven things up. <laughs> Baby Groot ends up beating Serpent, and we finally end the show multiple times. Yeah, they return of the king to this finale. And of course, ending with Peter getting embarrassed by his grandpa, which feels really insulting after watching volume 3. And that's season 3! It's over. What's well, over? It felt like they do a bunch of ideas on the board to see what would stick, but instead of picking one, they used all of them! I mean, what kind of ending was that? When it comes to ranking media, I follow this belief. If it's good, then I'll praise it and remember how great it was. If it's bad, I'll either enjoy it or remember how horrible it was. But between these two is mediocre, the worst possible outcome. Because then, it's not good or bad enough for me to remember, and I'll feel like I wasted my time. It tried way too hard to recapture the magic of Movie Guardians which ended up being its downfall. The second movie completely threw the Spartax relation out the window, and by the time Baby Groot was introduced, Teen Groot was in the movies. Oh, and all the Guardians died, so none of the MCU material was usable. It was at its best when they tried something different, which is why the video game was so successful. But the show was too scared to go any further and just crawled back to its safe zone. Regardless of what I thought, I don't think the show was going to last longer due to the state of Marvel TV at the time. I feel like this show suffered more than all the other ones, because every time I ask someone what they think about it, they don't remember. Maybe now people will give the show a shot, but one thing's for sure, I'm done reviewing all the connected shows. Finally, no more reviews. I can focus on- wait. No. No. No!